My name is Connor Barrett, and this is my presentation on John Thatch. So, in his early career, John Thatch was a graduate of the United States Naval Academy class of 1927. After he graduated, he ended up serving for two years on the battleship USS Mississippi. At the start of his career, he did not have any interest in aviation and was only planning to be in the Navy to serve on ships instead of as a fighter pilot. He then got an offer to go join a Naval Aviation course, and he decided to take that offer and ended up going through that training, and he joined Fighter Squadron VF-1B, which ended up being scout aircraft and dive bombers. In 1939, he would eventually get the chance to fly fighters, and he flew the F-4F Wildcats in VF-3. During World War II, he would go undertake many combat missions during the start of the war and ended up with six kills, two Navy crosses, two Navy Distinguished Service Medals, two Legion of Merits, a Silver Star, and a Bronze Star Medal. However, this was not his biggest accomplishment. His biggest accomplishment was a maneuver he created called the Thatch Weave. This allowed a group of four inferior planes to take on a number of superior planes because of a tactic where they would cover each other when they turned, allowing the other planes no chance to shoot them down. This tactic was first employed during the Battle of Midway and was very successful, allowing American aviators to shoot down 31 Japanese Zeros for a loss of five aircraft with the squadrons that use this method. This tactic would then be kept by both branches of the armed forces throughout Korea and Vietnam and would be very successful in all of these theaters. In his late career, he eventually became a admiral and would command USS Sicily, an escort carrier, USS Franklin D. Roosevelt, a uh, full supercarrier, and he would also contribute to development on the A-7, and he would work hard to increase America's anti-submarine abilities and would command an entire anti-submarine task force consisting of an anti-submarine carrier and all its supporting units. He would end up retiring in 1967 and later died in 1981. In his legacy, he had a frigate named after him and these are my sources.